取り柄のない僕に空から取り柄が降ってきた面白かわいいミツルキャラが大騒ぎ爽快ぶっ飛びの青春音楽ゲームついに登場ギタルマン By the time Parappa and Space Channel 5 was out, rhythm games were starting to pick up steam to the point where almost every company were trying to get a piece of this rhythm cake. You had Konami who was hitting the big with Beat Mania and especially Dance Dance Revolution. Nintendo popped up with Rhythm Tengoku, which later gave us the classic that is Rhythm Heaven, and later we would get the widely popular Guitar Hero. Which、uh, eventually led to the death of mainstream rhythm games. <laughs> Gotta love oversaturation, am I right? <laughs> However, the game we're talking about today is a unique one. As in 2002, the US ended up getting the weird yet charming Guitaro Man. Or Guitaro Man, or. Uh, uh, Guitaro? Guitaro?、Uh, okay, you know what? Fuck it. I still don't know how to pronounce the name of this game, so let's just, let's just move on to the AMV. Guitar Man was developed by Inus, or Enus, I don't know, with the big man behind this game being Keiichi Yano, who I learned recently was the same man behind Elite Beat Agents. Yes, that Elite Beat Agents. If you were my age when this came out or older, then you know a good amount of people who were talking about this game. It was that popular. Around this time, Inus was a new company, with Yano being one out of the three founders. Plus, this was his first game as he was acting as the lead programmer for it, with the artist of the game being Bisu Nakamura. And there is one thing you're gonna notice immediately is the art, which is mad different compared to what we've seen so far. Hell, at first, it reminded me of some of the early album covers that Sai had. You know, the dude who made Open Gun. Fuck! Beyond that, I haven't been able to find anything else about this game. Like, I did it took a whole week after being it. Just to try to find some morsel about this game's development, or maybe even an interview or two. But nope, there was nothing besides reviews for the game, a blog talking about how good it was, and the sad reality about a game that he was supposed to make with the creator of Parabola the Rapper. God damn it. This is like the second time I've reviewed a game where there wasn't really a whole lot of stuff about it, and it reminded me of the hell that I went through to try to find some info for SFT2. Well, that was one of my favorite videos to make.、Uh, It wasn't exactly fun to do the research for. It really wasn't. <laughs> and so, if there isn't anything else to talk about, well, let's go and talk about that zany ass story. And I mean, like, really zany. The story begins with the introduction of U1, which, real quick, who the hell names their kid U1? Oh, wait, okay, hold up. Correction. His name is actually Uichi, with that nickname being common for those with that name. Then why the fuck? <sighs> okay,、mm, you know what? Screw it. We're just gonna keep on calling him U1 for the rest of this story. Fit. Yeah. Fuck it. If you watch the opening movies, you can see that he isn't exactly a cool character, especially from what we've seen from the other games we've covered so far. In fact, he is a self proclaimed loser trying his best to win the heart of this girl named Pico, only to be passed up by the infinitely cooler kid on the block, Kazuya. However, this ends up changing when U1 comes face to face with baby Dave Grohl. And when U1's dog Puma gives him a weird looking guitar, he turns into a being known as Guitaro Man, or Guitaro Man. I still don't know how to pronounce this shit. After defeating baby Dave Grohl, we end up going on a weird ass journey to collect all the pieces of the Guitaro and head to Guitaro Planet. And if you doubt the sequence of events in Unjim and Lammy was weird, the shit that this little nigga goes through is leagues beyond that. We end up battling against a fleet of UFOs making people dance, a nigga dressed in a b e a s t suit who is shaking out as something fierce, and a space shark that is the vein of my fuck. You know what? Not yet. I'll get to that ass later on. We make it to Planet Guitaro and meet a girl named Kira who we end up serenading with easily one of the best songs of the game, but it's short lived when we end up getting caught up in a trap and end up in a weird prison compound. From here, we end up having to fight a trio of skeletons in the most goth goth that has ever goth in his gothing ass cathedral. Also, he looks like David Bowie, and you would be lying if you said that ain't true. Before fighting the main villain of this entire game, Zoe, we go up against Kira, who is actually Zoe's right hand man. Woman?、Uh, okay, you know what I mean. And after an amazing performance of collecting all the guitar pieces, U1 transforms into Devil Man. Oh, oh shit, fuck, fuck, wait, wrong、ah. thing right there. Oh, Christ.、Ah. U1 turns into the true guitar man and faces off with Zoe and defeats him. Despite having to leave playing the guitar, U1 ends up heading back to Earth, this time with some newfound confidence. And that's Guitar Man's story. You know, uh, short yet weird as fuck.
Again, this story isn't much, because, you know, it's a rhythm game, but it's slightly more character-driven for her boy Yu Won. His arc, while extremely simple, is a tale of someone trying to become more confident in themselves, which is actually really endearing. Sure, he claims to himself that he's a loser and will also see him being an anxious wreck through most of the game, but it doesn't really come off as being annoying, and we do see him being less of a wreck through each stage. And I'm glad it was like that, because he could have easily been more and more annoying. There's other characters, of course, but besides Puma, they aren't prevalent throughout the story. Zoe is your standard villain, whose design reminds me of a tokusatsu villain, and Kira is just, um, really, really simple. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about her either. Puma, though, is a great comedic force in this story. He often points things out about you one or gets him caught up in some shit by complete accident. He low-key reminds me of Snoopy and his character and, of course, his design. Hell, even without Puma, a lot of things in this game are just plain out comedic in a way that's mainly seen through this game's weird gameplay. And you know what, for that matter, I have a question for y'all. Have you ever wanted to play a game with a guitar and a guitar hero isn't exactly hitting those marks for you? Then consider playing Guitar Man, because the way they simulate guitar is really interesting. Throughout the majority of the game, you have to guide the left analog stick to a trace line and press any one of the face buttons when the action button shows up. And you know, originally I was kind of like, you know, this shit is not going to work. It looked weird, it looked awkward, but when I played it for myself, I, let's just say I was like really surprised that it worked that well. It's surprisingly comfortable for the majority of the game until you reach the last half and now you're dealing with Carpet Tunnel. <sighs> Fuck. However, as much as I love this gameplay, the weirdest thing about it is actually doing the tracing. There's moments where you swear you hit it only for it to show that you did it, and I remember being freaked out so badly that on the first night of recording, I went through so many controllers thinking that these bitches were about to run as mark. Well, come to find out while looking into that shit, the game seems to be programmed in a way where the cursor snaps to the closest angle of your analog stick, and if you're using the PS2 controller, oddly enough, it isn't all that great slash accurate for this game. You wanna know what's like really weird? If you use a PS1 controller, this shit works a lot better than the PS2 controller. You'll still have some issues here and there, but it isn't as bad as the PS2 controller, which is really weird. Finally, in some parts of the level, you'll have to hit one of the face buttons on some DDR shit. And while there's only a few moments like this, some of them can be straight up annoying in later levels. Speaking of which, both of this stuff is something you're going to have to go through when going from level to level. There's three phases that you'll come across and it can switch up at almost any time. At the beginning of the level, you have the charge phase, which will have you gaining health by tracing the line and hitting the buttons on time. This is followed up by the battle phase, which will switch between attack and guard. In attack, you will attack by doing the trace line again, but in guard, you'll have to hit the face buttons on time. And if you miss a note, you'll lose some health, run out of it, and it's a game over, you know, pretty simple stuff. Though, oddly enough, you can also get a game over if you don't dwindle the enemy's health by the end of the song. But I'm not sure this can actually happen because I haven't seen it happen before. Anywho, the last phase you'll come across is the finale phase, which is an all-out playing session where you gotta trace the line to dwindle the enemy's health. And before you ask, yes, you can lose health here as well. Some levels will follow this formula to a T. Meanwhile, some will just switch it up and maybe even make it a living hell for you. But one thing is for certain, Timing isn't that bad with this game, which I can say right now, thank god, because, oh boy. And with playing Guitar Oh Man, this game is slightly longer than Parappa 2 and Space Channel 5 2. There's 10 levels in total, but if you're expecting this game to, you know, slowly but steadily get more and more difficult as each level goes on, uh, just, just know that there's only three levels that's like that. Everything else, yeah, this game's gonna put you through some hell. Before even getting to the first level, the game will have you go through a tutorial level. While it can't be skipped, it is worth it to go through for your first playthrough as it does a great job explaining the flow of the game and it's not as brain dead like most tutorials. Even if you skipped it, the first level does just as much of a good job trying to teach you the controls. Then again, doing that will kind of be like getting drawn into a pool of sharks, but luckily they aren't hooked up on crack and they just be chilling. Translation? This level is really easy. Level 2 is the level where you'll quickly learn that this game has some really good music. It's a small step up in difficulty, though it isn't really difficult in the traditional sense. Where it's difficult is in the fact that you're going to be dancing your ass off and laughing at the stuff going on, on screen. But the music here, though? God 
damn, it's really good. You see, Euro B song was are always catchy, and you might have heard some of these songs if you watched the Initial D. Though something odd about this game is that if you played the US version of Guitar o Man, the song is in Japanese, but if you played the PAL version, it's in English, which is really weird. I, I don't know how to explain that one. Also, before I go to the next level, I swear I've seen these dances before that's been going on throughout this level. If I remember correctly, I think it's called, what, Para Para or some shit? Hold up. Oh! Man, wait a minute. This shit was easy. Hold up. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. I'm not- I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Next is the third level, which, uh, yeah, it, it's something. So starting off with the good stuff first, uh, I love the funk inspired music as it has this sort of psychedelic vibe to it with a strong guitar riff. Now, how are you thinking it was made by either Boosty Collins, James Brown, or even Chuck Berry? Just couple more that I think I'm missing, but let's just leave it at that for now. And when it comes down to the background, it's filled with a bunch of funny shit. The frogs look weird, and this bear is out here being the absolute fuck out of this tree. I don't know what he did to deserve it, but that's none of my business. But one thing about this level that I do not like at all is for how long it is. The structure is still largely the same, but you will have a long ass battle phase where the guard sections can easily trip you up if you're not ready. And when you reach the finale, not only is this shit Caesar reducing, but this man just starts shaking his ass like something crazy. And I know he's meant to represent a B, but damn! I can also talk about the fact that this nigga looks like Boosie Collins but I don't have the energy for that right now. So after the joy ride that was the past three levels, Guitaro Man decides to send you to Guitaro Hell. What does it mean exactly? It's literal hell. Level four only has a guard section that starts off fine, but ends up pulling stuff out of his ass at a rapid pace. And while I could talk about the music here, which really isn't much, uh, this level fucking sucks. And I wanted to just take it to the fifth level where it's a lot slower, but it's also really weird because the shark turns into a robot. I I'm not gonna question that. Anywho, the level five is, yes, a lot slower, and it's also based around reggae, which kind of sounds good here, but I'm also like, meh, but anywho. This level isn't as drawn out as the dirt level, but it's also where the structure starts to change a bit. During it, you pretty much flip-flop between a charge and the battle phase, which for the most part isn't too bad because it's pretty slow and it's, yeah, it's not as bad as the last level. However, there are still some annoying moments during the guard phase where the button combos are weird to hit and you can't get tripped up when it transitions to the attack phase. Luckily, the game gives you a small break before putting you through the hell that is the next two levels. And while this one isn't as wild as the others, it actually has a variant of the best song in this game, The Legendary Theme. Not much to naming, but it truly sounds legendary, believe me when I say this. This version of the song is in the acoustic version, which has moments where your ears start to perk up like a little dog when hearing their favorite word. And when those moments happen, see, at least for me, it gives me a vibe of just watching a beautiful ass sunset. And let me just say this too, real quick. Uh, if the soundtrack for this game ever comes out within the next uh, year, year or two, whatever the case may be, I'm going to be listening to that version of the song and it will be number one on Spotify. Yeah. The gameplay of this level is pretty easy as the only phase you're really going to be going through is the battle phase, but I honestly can't really call it that. And this brings up a small gripe that I have with this level being that I just don't think your health should be depleted if you missed a note for this one, as it kind of feels like an interlude to the amount of shit that you're going to be going through later on, if that makes sense. And as much as I want to gush in the song even further, I'll just save it for the ninth level. Well, I hope you enjoy that level, cuz... Welcome to hell, motherfucker! <laughs> These two levels are the hardest in the entire game and will more than likely take up to five times to do each of them. Now level seven is with the skeleton trio that has weird button hits regardless of which phase it is. Speaking of which, there's only one charge phase in this entire song, and once that's done, prepare for a marathon of hell. Luckily, this stage does have some good ass music, which softens the blow just a bit. 
but I can't say the same for the eighth world because this one is other bullshit in so many ways. So where to start? This song is fast as hell, leading to timing being pretty strict here. The trace lines also have a lot of sharp turns, making it hard to perfectly trace them. And while you have two charge phases, it only occurs back to back, which is messed up for how difficult this level is. And don't get me going with the guard sections either, because that shit, you know, that part can eat a dick. This level is easily a low point for me, but not too low for what comes next. After beating those two health spawns, we reach the best level in this game, level 9. Now, this level is split up between two parts. In the first part, we gotta go up against Kira, which is fast but really short. Though once the second part starts, we get to play the legendary theme again, but now it's grander. Everything about this stage is what I love about Kitaro Man. Cool and comedic visuals, tight gameplay, and amazing ass music. If it was just this, I would have played this level over a hundred times because that's how good it is. And that theme is what actually made me interested in this game. The way the chords on this guitar blend with each other and the intensity of those big moments made this one of my favorite songs to listen to as of recently. And if you don't believe me, check out this snippet real quick. Overall, this level is amazing, and it surprisingly carries over into the last level. Kinda. Sort of. Mmm. Okay, this level is weird, man. Like, I'm actually conflicted on this last level, as it's a cool-ass level with some great music. But what the fuck is even happening? When going through the charts and attack phases, it's fine. Weird at points. But fine. Those guard sections still? But oh, what the fuck? These bitches are so confusing to nail down, especially when it transitions to the attack section. And I messed up so much here, I swore I was going to lose. But there is a ton of charge phases, which made things somewhat better. Still though, what the fuck? <laughs> After being the game, you end up unlocking a new mode known as Master Play. In this mode, the levels are a lot harder, and if I were to put the regular levels on a scale from 1 to 5, with 5 being the hardest, most of these stages would range from 1 to 4. But when you do Master Play, it cranks to 5, and at worst, 7. So, did I do them for this video? Hell no. All the evidence I needed was seeing videos of people doing this to see how it would be a pain in the ass, and I'm damn sure not dealing with these bitches again. But by all means, if you want to go through this hell, you're more than welcome to do it. Just prepare to develop arthritis when you do so. Guitaro Man is a hidden gem on a console that's full of them, and that's saying something as this game is something I wish more people knew about. It's genuinely an amazing game and it's easily the most underrated on the PS2. And what's even better is that Yana would go on to make even more games that were not exactly like Guitaro Man, but kind of had the spirit of it. Okay, maybe not spirit, but they were still really good. There's Osu Tatakai Owenden, and of course the popular Elite Beat Agents. All games I do recommend you guys to check out when you get a chance. And normally I would, you know, go and talk about the game's shortcomings, and just, you know, be like, oh yeah, there's some things that's good, things that's bad, so on and so forth. But uh, besides the difficulty with the analog stick, it isn't that bad. I, I really like this game. Hell. Fans and critics were both loving this game and everything about it. The only bad thing is... Actually, you know what? Fuck the quote-unquote. Let's just talk about the elephant in the room. Now, despite the love that this game received, uh, Guitar Man, upon release, didn't really have a lot of copies made for it. And it basically made it a pretty rare game to get at the time of its release, oddly enough. But what made it worse was that even though it did get reprints just like Eternal Punishment did, it ended up becoming among the many retro titles that ended up being expensive as fuck to get. At worst, you're going to be spending upwards to $200. If you just want a loose copy, like just the disc, you might be paying around $80. Yeah, fucking insane. Luckily, it is going down in value ever so slowly, but there is another version you can get, which is a lot cheaper. 
As of November 14th, 2006, PSP owners end up getting Guitar Man Lives, a direct port of the game that is a lot easier than the PS2 original. And while this version is great, it doesn't hold a candle to the visuals of the original, which is fine considering the limitations of that handheld. I'm gonna be honest, originally I was gonna add the whole should you play section right here to say, yeah, you should play Guitar Man, but if you didn't notice how much I gushed over this game over the course of the entire video, I, I mean, it's pretty clear that you should play this game. Guitar Man is a game that I recommend to damn their everybody. It not only has become one of my new favorite games that I'm gonna be replaying quite often, but it's a game that should be experienced at least once in your life. And despite my warning from the last video about playing it on emulation, honestly, I would still recommend trying it on there just because of, you know, the game is expensive as hell to get physically. Or if you still have your PS2, some blank DVDs, and a USB drive, you could just soft mod your PS2 to play it on actual hardware, which is what I did and honestly will do for a majority of games that I want in my collection, but they're expensive as shit as of right now. Hopefully those prices keep going down. Coming down. But... <laughs> But if you got the money and of course you're not struggling financially, I do recommend getting the PS2 versions or maybe even just get the PSP version. While the visuals aren't as great as the original, it is understandable because of the PSP limitations. Regardless though, I do guarantee that you'll guys enjoy this game if you end up giving it a chance. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. It was pretty fun going through these rhythm games and even getting some of these games off my mountain heap that is my backlog. And they were pretty quick games to go through as well, despite the uh, struggle I'm going through right now with my semester. <sighs> I'm so ready for this to end, but October is finally here. So you know what that means? Halloween, bitches! So next time I see you guys, we're gonna be spending the next two videos covering some good old horror games. And this time, where I usually would tell you, hey, this is the game we're gonna be doing next, nah. I'm gonna let that be a little secret. Just know, uh, it's gonna be some classics. It's gonna be some classics, some great games, and yeah, maybe there may be even a third title. Maybe, 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 yeah. Like always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the bell notification so you guys know when the next video is gonna be coming out. And make sure to stay safe, wear a mask because it's getting crazy out there, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!